So this talk is uh, by Xu Ko. I am not certain if I'm pronouncing your name right. I'm so sorry if I'm not. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, it will be about turning pandas data frame to semantic knowledge graphs, right? And um, when you go through our website, you can find all these links to connect with you on different platforms. And um, it's, time goes back to you to take it away. Yes, thank you. So um, yeah, as you can see from this uh, beautiful, beautiful um, background picture there, we have some cute pandas. Um, so the talk will be about um, what we all love, pandas, um, but uh, how to power it up, or like to make it, you know, um, to be more flexible so we can uh, even like, you know, deal with some more complex structure. So um, yeah, the slice is available. Uh, if you're interested in getting the slice, it's there. Um, also, I am contactable via Twitter. If you have further questions, you can pop it in the slacks. I would be uh, in the slacks um, during the conference time, but otherwise you can still contact me. <laughs> My contact details are here. Um, so um, I'm Czech. Uh, I love open source um, projects. Uh, so I, I have been involved in various projects in the past. Actually, my first contribution, I think, is uh, to Pandas. So thank you, Pandas, uh, that bring me to open source world. Um, so uh, right now, I'm very lucky. I work um, for an open source graph database, Terminus DB, which, um, you know, everything is on GitHub. Yay. <laughs> I'm just happy. Uh, also, I, um, I'm also, you know, I'm here at Party of the Global, but I'm also like helping out in um, EuroPython. Um, I'm one of the board member uh, last year and this year. Um, I mean, yeah, the coming year. <laughs> and then, um, you know, I'm organizing another conference, uh, Pajamas um, uh, in December. Yeah, so um, also I stream on Twitch uh, during the pandemic. I am doing it less nowadays because I just love going outside, um, going outdoor, even though today is raining, but you know, um, I, I miss people, I miss all of you. So um, hopefully I will see all my uh, friends uh, in um, High Data London chapter in person very soon. Um, so pajamas con, um, what it is? Uh, so uh, it's the conference that you can wear your pajamas. Uh, so the, <laughs> so um, the idea is that you know, well, before the pandemic or after the pandemic, we will still be doing it online, twenty four hours. Um, so worldwide, uh, it's free streaming. Um, so all the details you can find on pajamas .live. Uh, Register a ticket now for free. Um, so that's it. Like advertisement done. Um, let's go back to pandas. They're so cute. Um, so why do we love pandas? Um, well, of course they're cute, but uh, well, for the tool of pandas, uh, it's very powerful when you have a um, a 2D, I would say 2D because it's tablet data. Um, so a lot of times uh, data scientists uh, will use uh, something called CSV. I, I assume all of you know about it. Um, and also, you know, or similar, things like, uh, you know, Excel spreadsheet, we don't like them so much, not as much as pandas, but uh, Excel spreadsheet is a common thing. Google spreadsheet is more and more common nowadays, even like, you know, SQL databases, you, you know, sometimes um, you have different tables in a database, relational database. So um, a lot of times, you know, uh, we have to do some kind of statistical analysis of all these data. Then the easiest way, of course, is import them into, um, as a pandas data frame, so you can use it in your Python code. Um, you can, you know, find all the answers of your questions. Um, also, the good thing about it is that when you import the data, it will try to find what type the data is, right? So there's an automatic type conversion here. Um, you know, uh, especially when you have daytime conversion, because it, if you have to with daytime, you know, it's a messy business because time zone and all these like different formats that. Uh, people use so um, you can actually have a uh, parsing logic put in there and then panda will do that for you um, or something even more automatic you know um, whether something is a number whether something is just a string you know um, that that's that's quite good so uh, panda is very very you know simple uh, you know straightforward too um, but <laughs> some of you may came across something like this. How beautiful it is, is, um, is how when pandas fail. Uh, when you have normally a, a JSON format 
file. Um, most of the case would be like you have some API, you're scraping something, you know, or just getting data from an API. It'll come back in a JSON format, and then you okay convert it to data frame, yay! And then it become like this. Uh, is because the reason why it is like this is a JSON format usually is uh, nested. So JSON, think of it as dictionary. You can have another JSON, a mini JSON inside a JSON. Um, you can have multiple layers of stuff. So um, it's not flat. It's not two D. It's not what uh, like it's not like a CSV. It's not what uh, pandas uh, is. You know, it's uh, it's uh, normally deal with. So that's why when you just directly pour that into a um a pandas data frame, it will look like this. Uh, which is not what you want, right? You may want a summary as a column. You may want um let's say the issue type as a column, and then maybe the issue link, and then there's issue ID. So everything need to be a column, right? Um, and then you have different values in it. Um, so yeah, this is a picture I get from my blog post. So this blog post teaches you how to flatten it up so it kind of become more readable. Um, but um, that also needs some like kind of manual like handling because if it's more than one layer nested, then you have to find that column that is still nested like this and then flatten it further. So um, it's uh, not that great is not designed to do this um so um yeah so this is whoa exploding so this is a um graph uh, that we have um in, in terminus db we have uh you know uh, once in a while we have this like internal hackathon we will just do some projects together just have fun um so this is uh, what we did last year i believe is uh, a long time ago so we have all these um they are uh different civilizations in the all human history, it doesn't matter like whether you are in you know Asia or in you know um, America, you know other civilizations, they have conflicts, right? Because you know um, humans are like this, and then we would just fight with each other sometimes, and um, the conflicts. So um, historian will have to maybe study this, um, and the best way to put it is something like what I'm showing you on screen right now is that something interactive I can drag it around for example I'm interested in what's the conflict here that I can zoom in oh, oh yeah sorry yeah. <laughs> sometimes it doesn't listen to me that well so yeah it's like you can zoom in to a certain civilization and see okay what conflicts uh, this civilization this civilization is having um so uh, we need something to store like data store in this like graph format we call it um of course uh, uh, Python users know that there are other tools, uh, you know, network X and all this, they, they also deal with graph, uh, but network X is more used for the uh, graph analysis, but not for visualization or stall stalling it actually, because well, it's in memory, right? It's in Python. So um, yeah, so how, what's the, what is, well, I won't say a best way, but an, an other way to deal with it. So um, we use semantic knowledge graph. So Terminus DB is uh, designed based on semantic knowledge graph. Uh, it's a graph structure, just like what you have seen in the last slide. Um, it stores the interlinking of different um, information. For example, we have civilizations, they have conflict with each other. Uh, you can also see some color code as well. That would also represent, for example, whether that is something that's written in history that is known, or is something that is unknown, but yet to discover or we know that it's not possible to discover any evidence of it. So it's unknown, known unknown. So um, yeah, so historians will, 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 will know about that. But um, but yeah, like uh, you can store all these different like relations between them. You can store some metadata about them. Uh, also the data type will be uh, really like uh, solidly uh, described uh, via a schema. So a uh, schema basically is just a plan to tell you what you should be expecting the data to look like. Um, so it kind of store these like, um, you know, what, what property a data, like a data point or a, a document in our term. So uh, we I have explained it yesterday in the workshop. So uh, there are recordings. I don't know whether that would be available, but if you're interested, you can go there. Um, so yeah, we have, um, so everything is, um, is stored altogether, a schema and, and the data graph. So everything is um, well-defined. There's no, um, ambiguity like you know a csv you know a, a series of digits could mean a in, an integer or it could just be a number that should be stored as a string because we don't want to the missing trilling zeros right so i have come across that problem quite often so well yeah um 
So, so now, like, let's think about let's think about it because, like, I what I'm doing with Terminus DB is that I'm, uh, you know, developing the Python client. So I'm thinking how I can make the life of everybody using Terminus DB much easier. So how about uh, we can convert things like a, a pandas data frame on, uh, you know, then convert it into a graph that I can store in Terminus DB and then the other way around. So um, that's what I've been doing. Um, so this is, so by the way, this is all based on my personal experience by developing this tool. Of course, you may have a better idea of how it should be done, or um, this may not apply to your case when you have to convert a graph into a data frame uh, or vice versa, but this is just my experience. Uh, so hopefully give you some idea what you may have to pay attention to, um, but it's no mean the, the correct answer or something like that. So this disclaimer aside, so, um, so in Terminus DB, like I said, it's, it's a semantic knowledge graph. There will be a schema that describe how the graph should structure it. So we have to think about what the schema should look like before we actually put the data in, right? So, um, well, if you are converting a data frame or a CSV um, in this case, so it's a flat structure. So it's actually not, set, not, not that complicated compared to the other way around, which you have to flatten the 3D structure. This is just, you know, you have a 2D structure that can already naturally sit in a 3D kind of situation. So this is good. Um, also, the other thing to be uh, careful about is that the data type, because, um, well, as pandas, we know that all the data type, you can yeah, you can see it or you can get the information about them by using .d types, right? So, um, but, you know, but in Terminus DB, we have to store them in a schema. So we have to get this D types information back uh, into a, um, a, back to a date for, first of all, the data format need to be one that Terminus DB can recognize. So for example, the uh, pandas use NumPy types, uh, NumPy day time 64, for example, then uh, Terminus DB won't, won't be able to recognize it. So, um, but what we have is that the Python types uh, there's already a conversion from the Python types to Terminus DB, uh, which uh, is using XSD, XSD type. So for those of you who really want to dig deeper, you can look at X, uh, XSD type. So there's uh, a full another like is another com common conversion that's used by another group of developers. You can go there and see uh, they have a website. So <laughs> um, yeah, uh, but you know, in this, uh, in this case, we just need to convert uh, the NumPy type uh, to the Python type. So uh, a, a small trick I use is that actually um, there is a dictionary in NumPy that store the type conversion from NumPy type to Python type, which is type dictionary <laughs> on there. So I can just use it. Um, and also um, that's only covered the data types, which is just like plain types that like for example, integer, string, daytime, all this stuff, but there's also link data, which is um, a document or an object has a property that is another document or object. So um, this, we call the link data. So usually they will be referenced by an ID of some sort. So if there is, then I need to link them up, right? So that's something that we have to bear in mind uh, if that's the case. So now, uh, once we construct the schema, then we have to think about how to load the data. So um, there are a few things to worry about. For example, size limitation. We know that uh, pandas work in uh, in memory, so uh, it's not unlimited. <laughs> so uh, or it's actually small relative to other uh, storage um, kind of solution. Like a database could have a better, a bigger capacity than your local um, RAM in your computer. So. Um, we have to do things in pat, uh, batches a lot of times. So that would be something that to be aware of. Um, so for example, in this case, if I have a very big CSV, if I load it into a, 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 you know, a pandas data frame, uh, actually pandas provide a very, very good tool to uh, allow you to load um, your data in chunks. So it's just, uh, well, it's, it's a small thing that people may not realize because we normally just use re CSV as re CSV, right? But if you put in a chunk size there, you, it would actually become a um, iterator that you could loop over. So it become a reader that you could um, load your data in chunks. So, um, but there is a problem coming uh, with it is that, for example, you have a column that um, is a um, is a 
digital, like uh, with with a decimal number, right? So some something could be like 0.5 or something, but a lot of them are zero. So the data are very sparse. Um, that could, if the whole chunk of your data, for example, let's say a hundred of them is a very small chunk, but a hundred of them, all of them are zero, then uh, that would become a um, a, a in, an integer <laughs> and then when you read the next chunk which got a 0 0.5 in it for example then there's a da uh, data type mismatch which is something that we want to avoid so finding a good um, chunk size is important uh, also um, always be aware of your data um, we should all always you know not just do things like blindly always you know understand your data before you do anything um, that complicated um, also, you can, um, well, the next thing that I would do is to export that in records because I want to have that JSON, crazy JSON structure back. Um, so again, pandas provide a very good, um, uh, you know, you can make it into dictionary and then use the orient, orient equals to record. There are a few options you have for uh, to dictionary, but um, records is the one that we use because um, then we can have each row as an object, um, which is how we model things in Terminus DB. So uh, another thing that data scientists love <laughs> or hate is NAs. So um, how, what, then how should we deal with NAs? So, uh, I have three strategy here that I give uh, the user an options to do it. So first of all, if um, if you really hate NA or your data should not have any NA, uh, if you would rather, for example, if there's one NA in any of the um, records or um, rows, you would rather drop the whole record or the whole row. Then this is one of the options you can do. You can drop it just like that, or you can make it optional because like, you can, uh, the other way around is that, oh, this column can have missing data, right? So uh, you can declare that in Terminus DB. That's another advantage to store data in a graph is that um, in pandas, you would just have an NA there, right? So it's, it's a bit, um, some, sometimes we don't like it. Um, but in, um, in the graph format, you can have that property as missing. You can, you, but you have to set it in the schema though, set that, oh, it can be missing. So... Optional is another option. Um, the other thing is that um, when I automatically read this CSV uh, or pandas data frame, when I try to convert it, I will just throw an error. I will give the you know the steering wheel back to the user. So, like if they are data scientists, they may want to clean the data a little bit more, or if they're developers, they may want to see what causes this, and then maybe they want to replace some of the missing value with some dummy values. So. Um, so how about the other way around? So, um, so this is so far is quite straightforward because again, we put a 2D flat structure into a 3D uh, nested structure. So it's not as difficult. So the other way around, we want to put a, you know, nested, like imagine that JSON file, like how can you flatten it, right? How can you put that nested structure into a 2D structure? So the flatten procedure is, um, it could be quite complicated, but I would, uh, summarize it as follow. So first I would um, just convert it as a data frame. Um, so I would get, uh, so everything would be in a JSON file. So each record would be, um, you know, an entity itself. Um, you can just use the data frames from records, which is quite good um, to convert it. Okay. Um, but of course, most a lot of time it won't work because of that nested thing that I mentioned earlier. So the next thing is to denest it, like to expand it. So um, in JSON, we have the, uh, in pandas, we have the JSON normalized, which is a, um, a building method. Uh, not really. Okay, again, so, um, so uh, in pandas, we have a JSON normalized, which is a, um, a function provided by pandas that you could, um, flattened your data frame. Uh, but the problem is that uh, you may have to do a little bit of um, fine tuning. For example, uh, you may have to rename the columns a little bit here, like what I'm doing, because I want to see which, um, so when I expand a column, like a, a nested column, I want to see where it came from. So I want to um, do a little bit of uh, handling there. Um, also, this uh, doesn't work um, uh, for a you know, more, more than one layer nested 
nesting. Um, so you may have to go back and check whether you know everything is normalized. Um, so I do it like per column. So per column normalized and then join them back. If they're still nested, then you can uh, do it again. So the last thing is that you would have to uh, go to see the embedded objects because um, I mentioned before some of the objects you know they are they are linked data so they are referenced by an ID so in that case uh, you would be given an ID as the value of that uh, column so what you want to do is to use the ID and find the object back and then embed it so um, this is the three steps uh, some of them you need to repeat you know rinse and repeat so sometimes the embedded object you get back is nested so you have to expand it again so um, also the embedding object uh, you may want to set a maximum depth because um, it could some some of the object can be linked within the loop right so you don't want it to be endless so you may have to stop somewhere if it doesn't work just stop okay um, so this is uh, almost summarized everything that I've done to build a tool to convert it. Uh, they are all in the Python client of um, Terminus DB. So um, I today I just touch on a very specific area of everything about Terminus DB, just a tiny, tiny bit of things. If you want to know more uh, about, for example, how to model your data uh, as a knowledge graph, we had a workshop yesterday, uh, but like I said, it's recorded. So recording may be available in the future. Um, also, we may have similar workshops or courses in the future. So uh, visit our blog uh, or, or chat with us on Discord. So these are all clickable links. So if you already grabbed the slides, you will have access to this. Um, so uh, I do not think I would have enough time for a small demo. How about, um, or do I? Okay, I will, just, I will just run a few scripts. So hopefully it will work. Um, Fine, so it doesn't take too much time. So uh, this is, you know, what I am I was using yesterday in the um, in the workshop. So uh, we have a few CSV here. So we have employees.csv, which is just an example. I can show you what it is. It's just like this. Okay. So now uh, with the tool that I have, so some code snippet for you. So this that that was the tool that I was building. Uh, I can just put this CSV into pandas. Well, at the background, and then. Um, Use it. Yeah, the slice. I would go back to the first slice at the end. So don't worry. I'll give you that. Um, but yeah, like this. This is. Um, I can convert this into Terminus DB. So what I'm. I can do is to first of all. Um, do a delete what I already have. So, <laughs> uh, not to confuse everybody. So I just delete what I wrote. Uh, oh, I have some uh, kind of thing. Oh, sorry. I did something yesterday and I totally ruined it. Uh, okay. So. <laughs> No demo. Now I would I'll give you the slice um, link at the end. So sorry, I, I forgot I make some changes to the thing and it's not done yet. So I'm kind of in the middle of developing something so it does not work. Um, but if you download, so I'm using the development version. If you download the, the real version, everything will work. But it's a shame that it does not work. Um, but anyway, this is the link of the slice. So you can get the slice. Um, and then I have now five minutes, I guess. So people can ask questions. Um, uh, whatever you want to do. So, um, yeah, I guess that's it. Thank you so much. Um, I'm certain we've learned a lot and uh, I'm certain there are certain people here who have questions. So you can post your question on the Q&A or you can send it on the chat. Um, if you don't have any questions, it's still fine. Uh, you can still connect with Shuka and all her uh, socials. There's GitHub, Twitter. I'm certain you can find her also on LinkedIn. And um, you can continue with the conversation, even on Slack. Oh, how scalable is Term Terminus DB? Yeah, so um, Terminus DB is, um, so the, the storage is built on Rust. So it's not like, you know, because we know that Python has this limitation, but Python is not optimized to be, you know, um, that efficient installing stuff. So uh, with Terminus DB, definitely it's more effective and also um, things are more complex. So uh, I can't give you a very solid answer because, um, you know, I'm not a backend developer who's writing in Rust, but if you really want to find a solid answer, you can come to you know, grab the slice, go to our Discord and ask them. Um, but it's, it's quite efficient. That's what I can tell you because uh, 
yeah, it, I, from what I heard from the team, is like kind of designed to be very, really efficient and uh, compact because they are stalling these triples and then in rust and all this stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shuk. We have another question here. Yes. Um, from yes, from Akiono. Uh, Akiono asks how to display the graph uh, on Jupyter Notebook. Yes, the Jupyter Notebook. So that that beautiful thing, right? So, uh, I we just have a meeting this morning. That um, so background story about that. Oh, where, where's the thing? Like okay yeah this this thing so this thing actually in the past so he, he, historically this thing yeah is built with a you know javascript d3 for those of you who know um well now it's too much notes but anyway um so uh, it's in d3 so it can be used in the jupyter notebook um right now this is deactivated because we have to do some upgrades to it um, but uh, today we have a briefing that like, you know, all the upgrades like is uh, the sign is there, we will implement them, it's, it's almost done. So um, in the future, this will be back in available in Jupyter Notebook. Uh, also, you can export it as an HTML file. So it's all using JavaScript. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shuk. I'm certain we've learned a lot. <laughs> and uh, just a reminder, this uh, session has been recorded and the recording will be available. So thank you very much.